Hello everyone and welcome to Housekeepers 32. This is SBS on the mic, uh, joined with Zora, also known as Zora's Knight. Yeah, it's me. I know I haven't done too much commentary for Rivals-related stuff in the past. If you've been following our Housekeepers series uh, the last couple, I say couple, last nine months, uh, we've been streaming through a few different other channels, but now we're beginning a new season. And what better way to kick off a new season than back on our home channel We're of AZ back, Rivals baby. of Aether. Baby! And man, it feels good. Uh, it's been a bit. I haven't seen this beautiful, beautiful waiting screen in quite a while, so this will be a lot of fun. Uh, also, I just haven't really gotten to do too much commentary, so I'll probably be on the mic more often for weeklies coming forward, too. Which is exciting! It's gonna and be hopefully amazing. we'll see some new players there's been some players that just haven't been active in our scene in a while so maybe some will return it'll be cool to see yes i am uh, very excited um this new pr season is kicking off today um and it's going to be a two-month season ending on uh whenever the last thursday of december is then we will be kicking off our regular three-month seasons from there uh so expect some fierce competition especially in the next couple months because they have much less time to prove themselves. Four events required and eight total events in the season. So you got to make at least half the events to make it in. And uh, that can be a little stressful early on, especially if you're not uh, expecting that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's going to be nerves. There's going to be action. There's going to be heartache. Uh, but more importantly, <laughs> there's going to be video games. And Pretty I'm typical for a new to, season, and man, I'm excited to play them too. Um, I've missed I'm gonna that. hopefully oh, enter? stream some of these so that dinos can get in on the action more often. But uh, I'm definitely gonna be competing in the ones that he's streaming. So I actually didn't know if you were gonna be entering. That's that's a nice surprise for me too. Uh, I will also be running a couple of the events, namely the ones where neither you nor uh, dinos are running it, and would probably rather enter. So there'll definitely be times where there'll be SBS and Dinos in a match, and that'll be really cool to watch. But make sure to give them extra special commentary when those happen. Hell yeah. Well, without further ado, <laughs> we're going to kick this off. We're in winner's round one right now with Tech and Marks. Uh, both of these players mm. are relatively new to the scene. Marks showing up at the uh, tail end of our pre-COVID era, while Tech is uh, the head honcho over there in Flagstaff. And has been doing a lot of really cool stuff and even runs a open to West Coast uh, tournament series on Mondays. Um, so if you're inter interested in that, check it out um, in our AZ Discord. We can get you hooked up there. Uh, but and it's a really ado, big thing, too. A lot of fun. Uh, we've had some out of staters, like uh, I think Pasty, Anti, yep. or just two that off the top of my head. It's a lot of fun. So definitely try to enter that if you can. All right, let's do it. Let's go into game one of this tournament. Hmm. Just now realized we're not really gonna have a uh, audio through the Discord way, but that's okay. Oh yeah, you don't get audio that way, do you? That's interesting. I'll have to adjust that later. Not today, <clears> obviously. <throat> oh, for sure. It wouldn't change too much. But uh, yeah, so we are here on this brand new reskin of Ethereal Gates and Tech. Looks so it. good. Mm -hmm. It looks so good, man. Shout out to the devs, and the song here is phenomenal as well. <clears throat> man, I like tech spacing. Those little dash back forward strongs, just in case the clan lands with an aerial. Mm, there's Ooh, that good there patience go. that, that landing. Gotta be patient, man. That spacing was flawless. Just a little bit back from the ledge, catch any tricks the clan has coming back. Oh, and just oh forward strongs. A forward strong. Oh my god, it dies in 52! Oh no! What oh. a call out on that down air. My goodness, Mark's not holding back. Man, you know Tech is a little frustrated after that one, too. Oh, Super absolutely. close, had a really clean setup there and just kind of jab, jab, wasn't really sure what to do. Mark's got that roll behind forward strong. Ooh, man. You caught him off guard. It was some, uh, some it was, uh, spicy DI. Stock for that, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, and okay, some sign taps. Not getting the follow up afterwards. Uh, Tech has been uh, working more and more on those sign tap com combos, and that was a nice little slide into the oh. second forward tilt. Uh, oh, but no. not gonna be oh. enough to recover. That's unfortunate. That was still pretty solid, though. I really liked the spacing Tech's using with a lot of his moves. Um, Marks, I'm big fan of him not really giving up, you know? He had an early stock he lost, but he took one back immediately. That was awesome to say. Absolutely. It's and uh, we are ready tricky. to go into game two. Let's uh, hold nothing back as we slide in here to Swampy Estuary. Ooh, Swampy, okay. Going with all the reskins, huh? All right. Ooh, I like this. A lot of aggression from Marks. I wonder if it was just a uh, missed tech on the F-Till or if... Uh, Tech just wasn't ready. Just caught him off guard. Yeah, either way, uh, Mark's showing that the aggro Claren is out to play. If you're not ready Get to uh, wave dash back and parry, then uh, you're going to have a really bad time against aggro Claren. Oh, yeah. Landing some uh, fair ones, which was pretty nice. Tip for fair ones. Pretty solid way to catch somebody who's just barely getting out of your range. If they're expecting to land with a Nair, if they're expecting to land and do like a tilt of some type, landing with just fair one actually can catch people. The Mark's doing a good job of it. Ooh, Ooh, all right. Sneaky. And Fortron, not going to take a good DI coming out from Marks. And the nice parry from Tech, too, all gets caught on the tail oh, end no. of his end one running out. <laughs> wow. It was a weird spot. Getting the parry on the platform is always a little strange, because you can't really dash back easily and then get back in. Okay, Mark's taking the lead. Yeah, this is uh, looking pretty good for Marks already. Um, last game, it opened up with Tech basically getting a... No. Uh, it wasn't a zero to death, but it, I think Tech only had about 25% on him when he took the first stock, so... Oh, no. Oh, that's not what you want to see. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But it happens. If you're not careful, it, uh, try to input something a little too quick. You're just not ready. Get caught off guard. Hmm. Tech's got something working here, okay. Ooh, Marks makes it back. I'm noticing Marks really likes those roll behinds. Uh, given the opportunity when he's scared, it looks like he tries to get behind you. Yeah. So, and it, it works, there it is. The roll behind went for the F-Strong. Uh, he got two stocks with it so far, so I mean, it's it's something, man. Yeah, this is gonna be really interesting. Marks is gonna need a lot of magic to come back from this deficit. For this sure. is only a best of three, so this is a winner's stock for Marks. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Gets the grab out of the Sour Nair and gops for the back throw. I really like that. Um, Especially if he caught some, like, bad DI on it. He could have ended a sock right there, right? This is still doable. Speaking of bad DI. scary? Speaking of bad Ooh. DI, <laughs> we got some. <laughs> it was scary. Yeah, <laughs> I now, saw the Ori launch up. Remember, Marks did take a stock with a Randy Dare at 50% uh, last game. So this is by no means over. Marks with the uh, little bit of uh, momentum here, getting that parry into some extra percent. That dash attack definitely read like a... Wait! Ooh, okay. This could be good. This could be really big. And there's the counter! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Super nice. All right. Oh, my goodness. Marks, Marks. playing great that game. So if I'm tech right now, I want to look for those defensive options. It seems like Marks is trying to get behind you, get out of strong anything to catch your di right and then on landing he's going for a lot of those fair ones i'm noticing fair is a surprisingly surprisingly good tool for him to to use here um it really is and another thing i noticed about marks is he's not really going for combos for the most part he's going for true. the offstage push except for the one grab which is why i love the di throw so much is because everything had been pushing off stage, but uh, Tech can it just was kinda, so smart. Yeah, Tech I, I guess... held into stage four, which is unfortunate. But yeah, that was a really cool idea with the grab. And it's just a creative use of the move, you know. Uh, grab locally is a little easier to react to, but even then, if someone isn't mentally prepared for it, you can catch some bad DI at any time. You know? Oh, absolutely. And if you just teach the opponent, hey, I'm sending you to the right, you're going to the right, off stage is to the right. And then you throw them to the left, you can just completely butcher any hope they had for DIing it. It's pretty funny. Yeah, are you ready? Speaking of, like, mentally yeah, I'm, aware, I'm are you mentally ready for an Endless Abyss Game 3? Endless Abyss? Yeah, counter pick from Tech coming out. Endless Abyss. Okay, you know, um, it's a good Ori stage. I, I don't rather, I don't think it's bad in this matchup. Um, and I do think it's a hard stage for Claren to use. 
But man, when the game is mostly about an edge guard, go into a go into a pretty big stage. Maybe try to get a little more room, uh, a little less chance of getting knocked off Sage on a stray hit. <clears throat> I can see it. Ooh, Ooh let's go. Mark's saucy. doing. Mark's getting some good damage there early on. Love the patience from both these players. They know that a missed move is potentially a potentially a stock. Okay. Let's get him back off stage. Rinse for Pete. Ooh, it's going to be hard to recover from here. Mm. Solid. Tech gave him plenty of distance and said, Hey, you know what? You have to use almost all your resources to get back to the stage. You're not going to have too many tricks left by the time you get there. Love it. That was... <laughs> if that had worked, that was a, a wonderful idea. I've noticed uh, a few ores going for that lately. Go for the uh, bash from Wedge. Try to catch the opponent sleeping. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you get it, it could be it could turn around the game. You know? Oh yeah, it's just like getting a random down air from Wedge. It's uh, it can be nasty. <laughs> so gotta say, man, Tex edge guards are just so on point. They're brutal. Yeah, they're not uh, to say that Marks is slacking really. too. Marks is taking stocks off stage, but Tech is just so patient here. Ooh, yeah. okay. Oh, and Ooh, there it oh, is. Oh, nice. You gotta respect that uh, that seamless forward strong. It'll catch you off guard. Gotta be ready for it. Yeah, and... You might be, with, like, expecting those multi-hits, you know? Yeah, with that, um, Tech actually is able to get the 2-1 with a 3-stock in game 2. Um, give me one second. I realize that we're still in our admin <laughs> chat, so I'm gonna I move saw this over the to commentary. So with that, um, Discord crashed on me, which is great. <laughs> um, I had OBS crash on me with no error earlier. I think I really need to restart my computer, first of all. Oh, uh, but I love it. it didn't. It did not crash OBS. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> At least so far. So yeah. So we are now in the commentary chat instead of our admin chat. Uh, so if. Uh, Zora does get tired, we can swap out a commentator. Or if Zora wants to commentate with someone other than me, I don't mind bowing out. But I am going I to it. definitely stick around for a little bit as we have some more matches coming to you. Um, we are going to move on to winners round two, where we have Night Slash versus Craig. Mm. That sounds like a good set. Those are two Craig boys. And uh, watching them duke it out will be a lot of fun. I know Night Slash. Flash in the past was not a fan of the matchup. I don't know if that's changed in recent memory, but uh, he was not a fan back then. So we'll see how he handles it. It can be tricky, man. Dittos are always such a... I don't know the right word for it. It's very divisive. Either you love them or you despise them. Right, but absolutely. As the viewer, dittos are always a treat. I've always been a fan of watching dittos at the very least. Dittos are like the best thing for the audience and the absolute worst thing for the player uh it, for the most part i don't really mind the claren ditto anymore but i know for a long time just because it's like i was the claren in arizona <laughs> i did not like playing it that much because i had less experience but, uh, and then some weirdo named dinos dinos something like that classic up. dinos <laughs> oh i love it that double crag on the screen oh yeah it's we're going to have some rocks, we're going to have some fairs, and we're going to have game some one on downbees. Forest Floor. Oh, man. I can see it. Uh, Night Slash seems to enjoy the stage. I definitely put it here quite a bit. Oh, that... Is that a coloring bug? Or is that a custom skin? Oh, that's a custom skin. I thought that may have been the um, champion, Craig. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, I this like is... It. These are both custom skins. That's a pretty cool custom skin. Like, it, looks, it almost looked like an error color, the purple, but now it kind of just looks like a nice highlight. Oh Shout my goodness. Shout out to Classic Dinas in the chat with the Prime subscription. Thank you so much, babe. It's been a warm minute, man. Yeah. Warm 60 seconds. The last time this channel was live, 
was for our special event we had, which was towards the beginning of the pandemic. And then before that, it was in March. So, uh... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the man. amount of down specials from these crags, I love it. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is exactly what I signed <laughs> up for. Is, this is prime cragging. Look at this. <laughs> oh, and the tech on the pillar, just on the top corner, too. <laughs> Uh, as MSP would say, like, give him some good cragging. One rock. Oh! Ooh, okay, okay. At least one rock, potentially two at any given moment. Oh, goodness. The one thing I love about Ditto's is the kind of, for lack of a better term, the, the cheese that your character excels at, right? Whatever your character, your specialty, the thing that when someone picks up the matchup, they have to learn how to deal with this first, right? More often than not in the ditto, <laughs> you can get away with it so much more. You'll see maples tether up airing maples and they'll never fall out. You'll see crags going for those raw down teeth and the other one won't parry it. And it's so beautiful, I it, love it. It really is, it's just the best thing you could ask for. <laughs> oh man, using the pillar to break the other person's pillar or hit them before they get it started is super funny. Yeah. Um, it's actually a kind of a classic to um, use your pillar to break the pillar in the ditto edge guard. Because um, as soon as you get them off, you want to make sure that you control the space off stage, right? Oh my goodness! Whoa! <laughs> oh, and I Always love seeing scary. the rock sitting on the edge there, just like precariously waiting to fall on someone's head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an acme anvil. I didn't know who died. <laughs> Nice slash doing a good job here, but Craig is not far behind. It takes one solid read and Craig's Absolutely. back in this. I'm getting confirmation from the chat that this is the uh, the ring fit villain Craig. <laughs> the ring? Oh my god, it's the dragon! Yeah, the newest character to the <laughs> Smash Bros. Empire. Coming soon. <laughs> after that Minecraft would actually Steam. Cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I would take it. It would be a villain. More villains are always nice. So we get the stock at 191, which means Craig could be easily alive another 100%. At Pog 90 Pog, actually. <laughs> at Tilted and traded with the Pillar Break game. <laughs> nice. Oh, this could be good. Oh, we went for the jabs. We'd be afraid of getting um, a stronger punish there. Yeah, this is some really patient, neutral, just like recognizing Craig does not have to brush in here to get this stock, and he's building this percent, slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. Your oh. goal right now is, if you're getting hit, get hit by a poke. If you're getting damage, get some damage. Get both of you to like 120-ish, because at that point, it's Ooh. anyone's game. Ooh! That was a nice tech chase. Super nice. When you see the uh, player move before the tech roll starts, oof. <laughs> That's the good stuff right there. It really is. That's That means they have the read, baby. Um, Craig's saying in the chat, he conditioned me for it, and I knew it as I did it. And that's how it always feels. That's when it feels the worst, honestly. <laughs> oh, the, when the Forsburn hits you with cape, turns around, runs backwards, and you just see your character roll. And you're like, I didn't do it. Like, no, I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I didn't do it. But my brain did. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my hands are moving on their own! <laughs> so we're going over to Tropical Pond. Pond for this second game, and it's an interesting counterfeit because, like, I know crags in general don't historically like this stage that much, but doing it in the ditto, maybe you just have to like it more than your opponent. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, if, if you know, man, a lot of crags hate this stage. <laughs> I bet I could go here and tilt them. Yeah, it might be a shot. Though, knowing Night Slash, I know he doesn't despise the stage. Well, Night Slash um, plays with Ash all the time, and Ash loves the stage, so I'm sure he's got so a he lot of practice. probably plays here a lot. Uh, Craig, though, I didn't... I don't know uh, Craig's opinion on it, but he counterpicked here. So I can only assume he enjoys it. And it is a triplot at the end of the day, and Craig does do some work on triplots, especially with the so, speed boost he's got. I've, I've got an update from Chad. He goes, so hear me out. I thought, what's the stage I hate the most? And I picked it. <laughs> I love it! I love it! <laughs> so we've got confirmation that yes, Crag do not like. Crag go here to hopefully tilt the other Crag. It's like a maple taking another maple to a friggin' Tempest or something along those lines. A Claren taking a Claren to blazing. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> You're like, hey, hey girl, wanna, you wanna get gimmicks? <laughs> here comes the Larry. It's all gimmicks 24 7, baby. Oh goodness. But oh, I could see it. You had a tripod layout. 
but overhanging flats, an awkward ceiling, and ooh, ooh, I don't know. The overhanging it's be... flats, I think, would be the only thing that the crag likes about this stage, honestly, because it gives you a chance really? to waveland somewhere else besides just the ledge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, like, a, a refresh rather than having to touch the stage. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's how you no, see camp is using over, overhanging uh, platforms. Mm hmm Step to speak. Ooh, okay, okay. Trying to keep... Oh, another head. roll in, Reed. <laughs> that rock. Yeah, uh, Craig was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get booped right here. <laughs> <laughs> Not the worst spot, man. Like, Alright, you got the read. That was fun. Ooh, Sorry, yeah. Night Slash looked like he was ready to Ooh, parry okay. that, but just was a little late on the realization. He's like, wait, this is gonna happen, and it was just too late. It's one of those things, man. You know what's coming, you see it happening. But the actual timing might not be as practiced as a Kragman. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, what a nice- he crouch canceled that jab wow. and then gets the parry on the forward tilt. I think the second jab missed, but definitely crouch canceled the first. That was nuts. Alright, let's go. This is still pretty close, but Night Slash has a solid lead here. Yeah, Night Slash looking really strong right now. Um, but Craig, definitely not out of it if he gets his fares! <laughs> oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Because he has his pillar over there in the blast zone. So that's going to do it for that one, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was solid, though. Craig did a good job. Uh, I love his reasoning for the counter pick. You're not going to find a stage that uh, is better for your character when you're playing the Ditto. That's not how that works, right? <laughs> so you got to start to play around with the mind game. Maybe if he hates it, I can go there. Or yeah. maybe if maybe I'll go to a stage that I just really like and hope he doesn't like it. You know, I do that sometimes. It's like, you know, I know everyone hates Tempest, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good at Tempest. So I'm going to take him to Tempest. It's a fair strap, man. All right, well, we are going to be moving on to the next winner's round two set. We are not streaming every winner's set, just to preface this to the chat. Um, we are going to stream one of the winner's round ones, because I didn't get replays for the other. Looking at you, Brave, and looking at you, um, Pokey. But Who we are going the, to stream... Uh, winner of that one? Um, <clears throat> Pokey won... No, Brave won that, I think. Ooh, okay. One second, let me check. Uh, Brave won that 2-0 over Pokey. Um, and then... Not played bad. Prox, um, and Prox beat Brave 2-0. So okay. the winner of this, which is Fragalicious versus Chompers, is going to fight Prox in winner's semis. Ooh, um, on the other Chomp. side of things, Night Slash just beat Craig 2-0, but uh, not not Ash beat Tech 2-0 as well. So it's going to be Night Slash versus Ash on the other side of uh, winner's semis. That'll be good. That'll be really good. So I am super excited for the set. Uh, I know Frag is an up-and-coming maple in our scene, and uh, Chompers is going. If I if I heard correctly, he's going. He's going Ellie. He's going. He's Snake. going Eliana today. Okay, so my opinion on Ellie Maple <laughs> is known that I think it's a. It, it feels like a slasher flick at times. Like it, it's scary, man. That raccoon just comes blitzing at you at mock speed, and yeah, it, it's it's terrifying. But I also know Chompers is the... <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I also know Chompers is the, the, the king of camp for, I guess, the best way to describe it in AZ. He is slow, he's methodical, and he will figure out how you're playing and stop you. So if anyone could kind of dismantle a player in the scope of like a set, it would be Chompers. So this is going to be hard. It I'm will be hard. To see how it goes. And, and Chompers is getting his favorite stage in Ethereal Gates to start it off. So let's. Ooh, let's are they doing it. the Frozen or are they doing the regular Ethereal? The regular, regular. Ethereal Gates. Start off with that scene. Always a fan. You know, if Chompers, if you're in the chat right now, I want to know if you like Ethereal Gates more than the Reskin. Ooh. Because like Cause the Reskin is Edelus's home. So. I was about to say it's Edelus's home, and the music is. Yeah, but also Reskins are. Um, definitely, like, technically counterpicks, so... True. And might have just been uh, respecting the, uh, the counterpick rule. I respect it. And this is also, it's, it's home, you know? He's used to this stage. So even if he does like the, the other one's aesthetic more, he might like this one just because it's the classic. It's the original. Yeah. 
Well, but off the bat here. Ooh, no! <laughs> I do know, just uh, also to preface the Ellie pick, that Chompers has been streaming Ellie at least on three separate sessions. I it's... don't remember if he's doing um, just the milestones or what. Milestone at first. Now he might just be learning the character. Yeah, Chomp exactly. Chomp is definitely one of those players who will sit down and say, yeah, I don't really get this character, and grind him out for like a week or two. So, And Ellie was one of those characters he did with a while back, so we could just be getting a refresher on it. But, so far, this is looking nice for Frag. I like the reseed, going for the uh, the Lily Ping Pong. Not something you see too terribly often, so it's cool to watch. Opting for the immediate tether, um, <clears throat> I think in that spot, going for a forward tether rather than an above tether would have been awesome, because he would be immune to the uh, steam, be able to act a little sooner, and be grounded, so we'd get his resources back as well. Okay. Opting for juggles rather than uh, send them off stage, and I respect that. <clears throat> in this matchup, Ellie doesn't really mind being off stage versus Maple, but she really doesn't want to be above Maple. Yeah, so. it, this is a really weird matchup where, like, we've we've played this quite a bit because I dabble with Ellie for like periods of time, right? And it's always come down to like just zero to de zero to deaths the matchup, really. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, in neutral, you, your goal is keep Maple out, <clears throat> build percent, get a mine on her, and eventually push her off stage. The Maple's goal is push any button on the Eliana, <laughs> and it gets stressful for the Ellie, man. But Chomp did a good job just trying to keep him out. Like, the percents aren't too far off. If Chomp can just get, like, a good up air, a uh, down tilt one, um, just, just something to start a combo. Or like a dash attack or an F tilt to push him off stage would be good too. Yeah, because yeah, th these percents are really close and oh my god, the Nair actually beating Ooh. out the missile, so no mine explosion until later and Chompers misses the confirm um, with the overheat explosion. Ooh. And now Fraglish is going to town, getting some extra dammy. And oh, I think he went Ooh. for the tether. I think he went for the tether. I think he did too. I think he caught him off guard. Yeah, Chompers parried smart. the Lily right before Fragalicious went for the tether there. Because Fragalicious still had involved. all of his resources. That's some matchup knowledge, I think, on Chomp's Oh, Just absolutely. <laughs> he's, he's had some practice. Ooh, this could be it. Ooh, he got an above tether. He didn't want that. Oh, and gets the DI directly into Lily, and Fragalicious now with a big lead. And uh, Chompers in advantage, though. Ooh, Dropping man, it just a little bit, and Fragalicious gets the bring us up. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you do not want to be above the maple. If he goes for an up B in any of these situations, he would have had a stock. Oh, and nice. speaking of stocks. Very good. Very good. Uh, biggest thing I'm seeing from Frag is he's going for a lot of up airs when an up B would kill. So yeah. if you're able to land those up airs, just go for the up B. Get that stock out of the way, you know? Um, if they're marked, there's definitely an argument for it, but... More often than not, you want to end the stock early rather than keep stringing along damage. Chomp's doing a great job of just trying to keep him out, but there's just been some uh, letting him back to stage a little easy and having a, a harder time, it seems, to push Fragalicious off the stage. Yeah, so absolutely. So what stage um, do you think then Chomp when, wants? When he is getting those uh, confirm opportunities, Chompers is just dropping him by ever so much. Like, mm -hmm. like he'll get the there, up air and then he'll quite. overshoot. Yeah. And miss the follow-up. So, so we have confirmation, both in chat and in counter pick, that Frozen Gates is Chomper's preferred pick. Very cool. It seemed like a stage almost made for him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like there's no way that like Chompers doesn't like the one made for Edelus better. Right? Now it definitely seems like it was just from observing the counter pick pool. Maybe he, he wanted to power up the transition yeah. can uh, give him that boost. So Frag going in early on, but here we go. This could be big. Get him off stage. It's gonna be huge. Ooh, ooh that's scary. <laughs> I love holding dash attack. That's actually like low key holding one of my dash favorite attack things is low key is just really like good. holding it. Even if you can parry, just keep holding it. It's just funny. It hurts. Frag tethered above again there. Yeah. Uh, he's not going for those tether buffs. He's tethering above and then I think doing an up air. I don't have audio for it, so I can't say for sure, but I know it's a tether above. Um, and that's so unfortunate. You never want to see those. That is, I think, one of the hardest things to grind out really on his maple is getting those tethers right. 
But, Chompers, I'm digging these dash attacks. Dash attack is a solid way to just push the maple off the stage. She's not contesting that disjoint anytime soon, you know? Um, Ooh, oh god, wow, there was still so two missiles. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually terrifying. All right, Chomper's feeling himself a little bit more, getting his plat drop aerials. Uh, you see, like, the, the APM's going up from Chomper's, too. Like, whenever I play Ellie, I feel this thing that's like, once my APM starts going up, my confidence also goes up. It's just like, it's, it's such a weird character to jump into, right? Absolutely, man. Yeah, the, like, the once Ellie is... has confidence, that's when you have a little bit more fear in your life, honestly. <laughs> It's true, because then it seems like they might know what they're doing, and you still definitely don't. Yeah, you're like, oh god, <laughs> I don't play against Eliana's. I hope they don't know what they're doing. Oh no, they do! <laughs> exactly! Oh, goodness. So, ooh, I love him saving Lily there, too. It's so smart. He's not marked, so there's no emergency, right? Right. Why waste that invuln early on when you can instead get a parry a little later? And that's just being smart. That's just having that pre- uh, that pre-existing knowledge. Ooh. Oh my god. They're above again! Oh, Those can't them. be on purpose. No, they're not. Uh, can you confirm that there's an up air starting after the tether above? Yeah, there is, I think. Yeah, then they're not on purpose. If you hear the whoosh sound effect, then that'll never uh, combo, so it's, it's a big one. You can't cancel tethers and frames if you tether above. Ah. Oh. So you will always get to move too slow to do anything if you do it that way. Unless your opponent, I guess, like double jumps into it, but you're fighting Ellie who doesn't have a double jump. Yep. So. And so <laughs> even though the tether above was a mistake, there wasn't a lot of percent that was taken afterwards. Uh, Frag was able to go ahead and continue Dick. and find that stock with only about 13% or something like that. True. This is close. Um, yeah, so this is an even game. Last stock for Chompers potentially on winner's side, and Fragalish is looking to go to winner's semis if he takes it. If not, Chompers is going to force a game three and oh, I'm, yep, that was an up air Another after tether, tether above. above. That yeah, is I definitely something that was an up air afterwards. worth practicing. That is such a big confirm to drop, especially on a character like Ellie, Ooh. because that can end it. And we take it anyway. Two zero, -oh, Fragalicious. Man, that was uh, that was close. <laughs> that was very close. So with that. Um, we can say some more words on it, but we are going to be moving to winner's semis where we're going to be watching Prox um, versus Fragalicious. But first, we're going to swing to the other side where we're going to be watching Ash versus Night Slash. Okay. Ash, Night Slash. Now, these two are sparring partners. <clears throat> Pardon me. They're sparring partners and they do fight pretty darn often. Uh, assuming that Ash is going Orcane. Ash is Orcane going Orcane, Craig. I can confirm that for you. Ooh, then this will be a good set. Uh, I believe Ash is favored to win, oh, but yeah. Night Slash has only gotten better over time, so I'm excited this will be good. I think this will be a solid one. Yeah, Ash today the two seed, and Night Slash is the three seed. So, um, Ash is favored, however, uh, Night Slash has taken sets off of Ash in these online tournaments before. He's good. I think uh, Night Slash has even gotten a set on me now as well, or back earlier on in the season. Uh, not this season, of course. It's just started today. <laughs> but yeah. back back in a bit. So he's good. He's a solid Craig, and he just took out Craig. So we'll see what happens. Excited. <laughs> Watch the ad. Whoever is playing right now, I'm cheering against them. <laughs> oh, I, I hate that it. Twitch is doing forced mid-roll oh, ads. It's actually the worst thing ever. I hate so, it, man. It's terrible. So here's the thing that I'm learning is you got you get a if you have an ad block on to block the first ad that shows up on the stream on swapping to a stream, you will get a mid-roll ad. <clears throat> every like 10 to 15 minutes wow. and it will just be a blank purple screen that says hey you have an ad block on um it's awful it is it's actually absolutely terrible yeah because my ad blocker doesn't actually stop the mid-roll ads i know that there's another mm -hmm. one that does so i'm gonna have to grab that it's, yeah um, i've been it's it's tricky man there's always an ever-evolving battle between ads exactly and ad block. so if you're watching right now um do not give twitch money fuck twitch um, 
because they are doing all this DMCA crap, and I'm really upset with them. For the that. DMCA stuff is pathetic. Yeah, I hate it's it. Just ridiculous. People, and how retroactive it is is just ridiculous. So what we can do? Streamers say they is, need to delete their past broadcasts to you know avoid yeah, losing their like, career is insane. Yeah, years of past <clears> broadcast, <throat> whatever. But anyway, so uBlock Origin is what I use for most things, but there is a second version of uBlock Origin that is also free that apparently works on Twitch mid-roll ads. So you should check that out. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by uBlock or whatever. I just don't like watching ads. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump into our first game of Winner's Semis. Which is Ooh, going to be Ash that. versus Night Slash on the AZ Classic Merchant Port. Oh man, those are two local boys. You know these guys have been the weeklies. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so this All is right. uh, no, actually I like best of that five. Start. So let me go ahead and update <clears throat> that. Uh, yeah, we are now in best of five territory. Best of five is top six. So this will be um, hopefully a really long, grindy set. I love Night Slash and Juice's platforms here. He knows that uh, Ash is controlling the ground. Like, all right, Ash, you want the ground? You can have it, man. I'm going to go onto a platform and I'm going to down me. And it's, it's super smart. But that patience from Ash. Like, yeah, you can play your game, Craig, but eventually I'll get in. And when I do, I'm going to try to keep you off stage. Nice. A nice little double jump back here to threaten ledge. Man, it's kind of crazy. I, I still remember fighting Ash regularly, and if you get touched by Ash, like Ash in neutral, you'll have you know you'll give and takes, but if he gets started, it is terrifying. Yeah, there his, his punishment is nutter butters. There's few people in AZ that I am as afraid of when I get touched. And uh, what I've been noticing over uh, the course of the pandemic is the neutral game from Ash has also been getting much more polished. Um, not sure exactly what he's been doing different, but I've seen noticeable improvement. Um, it's slowing it down. I think it's a big one. I, I just, I feel like he slowed the games down a lot more. He's uh, more reactive, which is funny given <laughs> the environment he's been practicing in. Right. But uh, yeah, he, he seems to be more willing to attack second. He'll still threaten you, but it, it seems like his, generally his attacks with map controllers. Like that. Where he kind of just waited for the crag to do something and pop bubbles. Oh my goodness, this is a barrage of bubbles. It really is. <laughs> this is like one of those toys that like kids will play with at Easter and just shoot bubbles everywhere into the air. Ooh, okay. It's good for stock. He's still not terribly safe from Crag though. Oh, one no, no, fair, no. one up air. Like, Crag is never behind and Crag is never in the lead. It's true, it's true. Actually, Crag is in the lead when he has three stocks and 300%. Oh, Honey. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh. uh, but yeah, like, Craig is. What happened? I think <laughs> Craig at like 0 to 120 ish is never in the lead. But once Craig gets to like 140 ish, then it's like, well, now he has an extra stock. Because it's just so much more difficult to kill him. Craig definitely spawns with like five stocks. Yeah, Edelus exactly. Spawns like, with like six you know how Edelus can gain more stocks by using a <laughs> hammer to get armor? Craig has that built in as a mechanic. <laughs> he just by default has more stocks. It feels like it, man. Alright, so we're gonna go to game two on. You guessed it. Guess it. Is it gonna be Trapple? Oh, you guessed it! <laughs> Honestly, I'm kinda surprised. I. I'm a little I'm a little surprised he wasn't banned by Night Slash, but I guess that shows he's comfy here too. He knows it's coming, maybe he just wants to get out of the way early. That's uh, another thing. I I think generally I left the stage open at times, knowing that, alright, well, Ash is gonna go here. Even if I lose on it, DSR means he can't take me back, so <clears throat> might as well get it out of the way, you know? I guess, but I mean if you really don't wanna go there, you just ban it. For sure, it, it's only. I think this really... is like they like the stage because they plant play here all the time. Could be it too. Comfort picks. Yeah, they Could are sparring well, partners, practice, and yeah. uh, it's a it's a beloved stage. And also, Night Slash played on it earlier today and did well on it. He did. He played very well on that stage. So, but hey, man, super clean stock by Ash. Ooh, don't like that. <laughs> don't like that at all. Whenever they set up a 
puddle on your pillar is like the scariest thing as crack. Oh, absolutely. It's just not even, uh, this is not a fun time. <laughs> okay. I like Night Slash chilling under his own rock. Like, yeah, bubble butt at me. I'll take it. Yeah, so last game was a three stock, and this game is uh, looking better, but still looks heavily Ash favored from just early onset here. Uh, did you know that um, if Orcane teleports at the pillar and you pull it before the hitbox comes out, it'll stop Orcane's momentum and they'll just fall? I did not. That's yeah. super cool. Pillar's wacky. I uh, just like how you can pull the pillar during a tongue sling from Rano and just send and him to fall. I did know that one. That one's super funny. Yeah, pillar pillar is a wacky thing, dude. But if someone's wall clean, they don't go to crap wall. It just forces a wall jump. Yep. So it's those interesting interactions. Ooh! No, oh, yeah. There it is. We have a full stock lead. Ash looking very comfortable despite doing a. Uh, getting a little bit more damage on him from last game, but actually Night Slash, as I say that, you know, hit me with the, the what are you talking about, buddy? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm doing fine. Yeah, I, I, he's at 91%. It's almost even. <laughs> Craig still has, like, two more stocks to go through. <laughs> yeah, Craig. Oh, my God. Craig is at, like, 90 stocks. But luckily, Orkane Ooh. has a frame 7 that takes out 30 takes, stocks Takes, like, 70 at once. stocks at once. <laughs> Uh, it's Ooh, Bubble okay. Hell. It's Bubble Hell. No, that's accurate, man. Oh, and you know, Bubble Hell doesn't work as well on the overhanging platforms. That's a it's point true. we made earlier, remember? It's true. Gives the crag another option to escape. Oh! <laughs> yeah, honestly, I want to say it's even, but I think he's about to get down. <laughs> hey, he's at over 120%, so now Crag is in the second stock. Okay, it's Oh, over. man, nice. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything off the bat, because I saw that 100% and said, man, that's prime down smash up air territory. <laughs> I mean, every every percent is a down smash percent if you really want to. It's true. Oh it's my goodness. It's so, true. Night Slash, um, doing much better that game. Not going to bring it back to the same stage, though. We are actually going to be moving over to a much larger stage, and kind of an Orcane favorite. Um... I think both characters like the stage equally. We're going to be going to uh, Frozen Fortress for game three here. Hmm, okay. <laughs> we got Christmas Crag! Christmas Crag! <laughs> it's not even Thanksgiving yet, Dan! Why is Christmas Crag in the game? Uh, we should have kept Pumpkin Crag a little longer. Pumpkin pie is prime Thanksgiving food. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> Okay, you know, I like this. Night Slash is getting a way more patient neutral lately. I watched this man spend at least half this game on top of one of those platforms now. Oh, I love watching <laughs> Craig spend time on top of platforms. It's my favorite. I love it so much I can watch it for eight minutes. Same. Hey, hold down the fort. I'll be right back. Okay. Ooh, okay. A little over eager on that ledge there. I think your best bet, if you think your opponent's gonna throw it an attack, right? You could try to challenge that back air with your own fair. It'd be a good trade if you could hit it. That's kind of hard to time. I am a fan of staying just out of the range of the back air and punishing the landing and reacting to the wave land. But if that is not a feasible option for you, or if you're just 100% sure that back air is coming, uh, parry it. If you parry the back air, they, they die. Um, there's a few sets of me getting that just a solid parry. Uh, so definitely worth doing if you know what's coming. I love Night Slash's patience, even when he's behind. He's willing to stay on that platform. That's good. That's how you should be playing on this stage. You have a giant stage to work with, and you're a giant boy. Oh, bubble hell. Uh, do you think that he knows he can air dodge out of bubbles? As simple as an idea as it is, it, it, it isn't something that I think many people realize they can do. Uh, if you have an air dodge, you can buffer an air dodge out of bubbles. Yeah, kind of like that. Both bubbles being fair and down beat. Of course, it's scary. You can, uh, oh man, look at that. That Orkane is at 165%. Bit. Remember when I said Orkane's like this stage too? Yeah. Yeah, no, this is one of my bands. I think my go-to is this one. Uh, either Lidum Take Me to Spirit Tree or Ban Spirit Tree. Uh, Jules Veil. Because I don't like the moving platform for him. And then... Uh, what's the other one? 
Tropple, because I know that's Ash's favorite. <laughs> but for any other Orcane, it's uh, this stage, Jewels, and um, what's it called now? Blazing. Blazing's good, but you know, uh, against Ash, I don't worry about it. He well, you said any other Orcane, though. But yeah, I could see Blazing then, just because you don't want to get honestly Debrick. Debrick is really, really good on that stage. Yeah, um, that is Debrick's favorite stage by far. And, and to I'm quote the... Debrick, he likes stages that allow that have big enough platforms so he can do raw back airs off of them. Makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Back air can be pretty darn solid, but that was a solid set from Ash. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty pretty strong. Um, and that is a 3-0 in winner's semis, meaning Ash is going to go ahead and fight the winner of our next set in winner's finals. Uh, our next set, of course, going to be Prox versus Fragalicious. Fragalicious on the maple again, and Prox today looks like he is opting for the Zetter Bjorn. Zetter, ooh man, Frag's going to get hit with the, the full Prox experience. I'm excited. So, let's see... Jules is Orkane's best stage. I can respect that, Ash. It feels solid. I don't know if it's his best stage offhand myself, but I know that it's good enough that I want to ban it versus him. Yeah, so, um, when I do these, I normally just do random bans, but like, I really like Jules for Claren. <laughs> Frag replied with, I prefer the Claren experience. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You know, no I don't fight a workshop because character. What is Zetterburn but better Claren? So of course you'd like to fight the downplayed version of the character. Of course, it's just a given. You're in a bracket, you're trying to win. You don't want to fight against something like that. Oh wait, hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh god. Why is he looking right at us? Oh I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> Maple's looking at Zetter like, all right, this is my fight. Zetter's looking at the, the audience. Yeah, wait, wait till you see it in the uh, top corner, buddy. Oh, hate it. <laughs> oh, no. So we're getting props oh, no. and Fragalicious <laughs> right here on Merchant Pjort. So that was a great start, knocked them off Sage, but the thing you gotta know about Zetter is you cannot sleep with that with, uh, with Ledge. Uh, I love Lily on Ledge against Zetter Burn because it is so hard to deal with. <laughs> um, if they tech it, that's wonderful. That means they're not able to instant up B land into something or up B wall jump wave land into something. It is so good at keeping Zetter Burn honest, it's not even funny. The Lily? Mm -hmm. But if they tech, they can tech Waveland. And Zetterburns are better they than could. any other mains at tech Wavelands. They absolutely can tech Waveland. And you know what? That's easier because you're forcing them to push more buttons. <laughs> the more buttons you can force the Zetterburn to push, the better. Make it, make it hard. Make them work for it. Make them work for it, yes. But also, you can get an inborn shine out of that. So that is already inborn. What you're saying, <laughs> I agree. No, it, it's it's not a catch-all situation for yeah. sure. I, I agree it, with what you're saying, but I'm, I'm saying like... As the meta progresses, this is going to be worse and worse for Maple. That edge guard is going to get worse and worse as everyone learns the tech uh, waveland consistently. Because agree. that I is think, the future of rivals. Tech waveland. I think Zetterburn in general becomes an infinitely better character the more he tech wavelands. Oh yeah, because his, his recovery, recovery becomes went from like disgusting. mid tier to high tier with tech waveland. Like it is it's so good. Kind of. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> That was uh, almost. That was Don't almost the worst it. thing I've ever experienced in my life. Oh, it's still bad. It's still bad. <laughs> it hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, that being said, with Tech Waveland, what you're gonna want to do is set Lily just a little bit in front of Ledge if you're afraid your opponents can do that. To be honest with you, oh god, that sucked him in from Vacuum Tech. Anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like Vacuum Tech. I miss Vacuum Tech. I miss Vacuum Tech. Cool dude. I think he'd he'd get a. I hate it every time it goes back. <laughs> Looking right at you, buddy. Um, most players are not going to go for the tech waveland yet. They should, but they don't yet. When they do, and when you notice an opponent who is, definitely move your lily a little farther into stage so they still can't do the perfect snaps with their up bees, and they can't do waveland safely. You still get the same benefit. You just don't get the super easy punish on the uh on the tech. Because if they don't go for a waveland, they're super vulnerable afterwards. So, this counterpick, 
I know. I actually, how do you feel about Treetop as Maple, ignoring the Zetterburn on the screen? So Treetop has one of the lowest floors, so it's the easiest to kill with a spike. Uh, okay. It also has a very high platform, which sets up beautifully for up air kills, while also being a very small stage, so it's easy to okay, push your Okay, now add Zetterburn off. into the equation. Now, there's the issue. That top platform means you die at 20. That low bottom means you die at zero. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I like the counterpick against most characters, but I don't like it against Zetterburn here. We're going to see how it fares. Fragalicious loves the Sage. From what I remember talking with him, he is a fan of the Sage. The age-old comfort pick. Let's do but it. Prox also very much likes the Sage. So <laughs> I am a little scared. But hey, I would love to see Fragalicious pull this out and just uh, tear apart Prox. But Prox is a, a very quick boy. And today especially, I feel like Prox's uh, APM is like triple what I normally say. Yeah, I'm glad that I didn't have to fight him. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, very clean. Love those mid-combo Lily Parries. Those are always nice to watch. And that's the thing, man. Against... Okay, that was a really... <laughs> that was a fortunate spot there. Uh, against Edaburn, you gotta be careful with your Lily placement. Uh, he is such a monster in neutral that you really don't want to give him a free parry because an Invuln Zetaburn is, I'm pretty sure, one of the four signs of the apocalypse. Yes. So you really want to be careful of that. <laughs> okay, I like it. Side beam to parry is always a valid option. <sighs> he gave that Zetaburn such a wide berth <laughs> on the Lily. He was afraid that the, the Zetaburn's up would hit him, like, in the middle of the stage. Uh, you gotta be confident, too, man. You can't say that far back. Yeah. That was solid. Uh, Lily on the ground versus Zetter is a, a pretty weird spot. I really like Plot Lily, especially on a stage like this, um, as it can really limit the options that Zetter has to the eye. Oh my well god, that as, angle oh, is so good. Yeah. Not only did he duck underneath the hit, but he made sure he hit the maple with it. That was a mm -hmm. perfect angle. Very Sometimes good I swear to God, Prox is like the best player in Rivals. Yep. And then there's other times where he gets dunked at like zero. <laughs> yeah. But we all have our on and our offs. You know? I don't like seeing that version of Prox unless I'm fighting. Then it's fine, yeah. Yeah, then, then he can do that all he wants. Like, it's <laughs> perfectly okay. I'm guessing he didn't want that tether because that was terrifying. Okay, went for back air, hit one there, but uh, didn't really get a too strong follow up. Ooh, oh, okay. Alright. Alright. Oh! No! Oh, that was definitely I delayed. saw the up B input. Oh, man. He wasn't even delayed, Ditch, really. He oh, started really? his up B. Yeah, he started his up B during the, uh, the up air. So oh. it fell out of buffer. Okay. That is one of those things, man, that I have seen enough time. <laughs> and that's the, the second one was him realizing that it hadn't activated yet and trying to salvage it. I see. Mm. Prox, I think, is one of the most aggressive wall riding Zetters I've played. So whenever I'm fighting Prox in bracket, and he's Zetterburn, of course, I know out of this wall jump, he's going to immediately go for either a side B, a back air, yep. just, just some aggressive tool. And that's why I think the Lily on ledge is so potent versus him, is he can't do that safely. Uh, he, he loses access to one of his favorite tools. Well, so it's something to keep in mind. That was a three stock, uh, if I am correct. I think he got a stock. I think it was um, it's like a, a charge down strong after a wrap. Okay, but it was well, it either was way, it was definitely all dominating. Crocs all the time. Oh yeah. But we're gonna go Crocs. back, and we're oh, gonna we're see how it back. goes. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of people in chat actually probably don't know my stance on running things back. I so my uh, stance is you just don't do it unless yeah, like USD and like it was one hundred percent your fault. Don't you need to have seen something huge. Yeah. To to I guess. Oh no, that's like if I was the getting upset. bodied and then had a huge comeback, then I'd be okay with it. Or if like I S D'd at zero and then almost won, then, then it, it's worth. Yeah, then but, I'd totally bring it back. But like if I got beat fair and square, you know, nothing, nothing like that was like out of the ordinary, then uh, I don't like the run back. I would try anything else just to get even if you think. It doesn't. The stage didn't affect the outcome of that match. You might still want to try a different stage, just to try to learn more. Then, like I've heard that 
Uh, excuse the water. Oh, oh no! no! That is heartbreaking. Uh, definitely heard the excuse a lot. Uh, I don't want to run it back. All right, I'm gonna run it back because the sage didn't matter. That's fair. But uh, generally speaking, if the sage wasn't the issue, then you might learn more by going, going to a different sage. Stage. Yeah. And then we and see the fireball again there. Did we get on the sage? Oh no. Okay. Oh, bad. Um, this is bad. Ah! No, no! Three no, no! <laughs> Oh, man. Fox really had Frag's number. Yeah. Um, so, Fragalicious says in chat that he didn't know where else to go. And Big I stages, think that's man. a good chance for you to go to any other stage that you're uncomfortable with. And see which habits show. Like, if you know mm -hmm. you're losing the set, do your best to bring yourself to somewhere you're not comfortable and see what you do in those situations. Oh, I fully agree. One of my go-to things when playing Rivals, either on Ranked or local or whatever, I will, as soon as I can, take my opponent to a giant Sage so that I can have the longest possible game to see how they play. With a player like Prox, you don't want to give him the smallest Sage in the game because he's incredibly oppressive at controlling a small space. So if you take him somewhere nice and big, he has a hard time doing that same thing. He can control one platform on Fire Capital and that would be about the equivalent of controlling the entirety of Treetop. And it's a lot easier to, to force him to approach differently. Uh, FD is another good pick for those things. Uh, get rid of platforms and see how they approach if they're forced to stay on the ground. Um, another good option is uh, going to stage like Gates. I personally really like Gates versus Zetterburn. Nice big ceiling so you won't die as early to him, but you can still edge gut him off the side. And uh, platform height helps a lot too, as he can't... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong here, SBS, but I believe he can't up smash you raw through those plots. On what stage? On gates. You are correct. So uh, I would say up tilt or up smash you on gates through those plots. I would say try to go to if you can, gates, uh, fire capital, and oh, was the one I just said a second ago, and gave like reasons to go there. <laughs> uh, hard blazing? to keep track of. Blazing is another good stage. I didn't say that one. That's another really good option. Blazing Gates, Fire Capital, and yeah, there are some decent ones. And I, yeah, I Ash, everyone has different opinions on uh, whether or not you should run back a stage. Um, That's but why we I said think, this is our opinion, what we like. Yeah, and I can I can respect the the thought that if you are very confident on a stage, you might try again, and especially if it's super close. I, I can I can understand the 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 want to do that. Salty runbacks are an interesting one. <laughs> I, I respect it. No, I respect the uh, I respect the conflicting viewpoint there. So, what is the next set we have on the table for us? So, I was gonna do losers quarters, but I am looking at the time, and I am not going to midnight like Dinos does. I just cannot do that. I so, agree. <laughs> uh, we are going to go ahead and go to winners finals, and then we are going to do losers semis through grands. I like it. I um, think so after winners finals. That's why finals... it took so long to get this set up. Um, but yeah, we're going to sure. go winners finals right now, which, as we know, is going to be Ash versus Prox. Very nice. Uh, I am going to after winners finals take a intermission, take a break, because I got a How message from my boss that he wanted to work on a project at his time midnight so <laughs> oh yeah cool yeah all right so I'll, well, I'll hop off after this one so this is going to be a set starting on merchant Pjort, uh as two more real ones get it done let's roll winners finals housekeepers ah. 32 ash versus prox love these boys that az pride going straight to merchant port okay so now uh for those of you who don't know because it seems like aeons ago now uh Back in the day, Ash was a Zetterburn main. <clears throat> he actually started, as far as I know, at least when I met him, yep, he was Zetterburn, Zetterburn main from the start. Um, and I gotta say, he was pretty damn scary with it. But then he picked up Orkane and got a lot better. Uh, I think Orkane just clicked with him more as a player, and uh, might have just been a better fit for him, just a better character overall for him. Um, but yeah. I am super excited to, to see these guys duke it out, because Ash does know a fair bit about Zetterburn. Um, by the way, he got... 
Knowing a fair bit about Zetaburn doesn't necessarily protect you from getting down aired by Zetaburn. No, not at all. It's like, <laughs> you can know anything down and everything. Me. I know a lot about Zetaburn. Trust me, I've, I've been killed by every move of Zetaburn. <laughs> doesn't mean he's not yep. a killing machine. He hit me with the dash attack. Now what's he going to do? Fair dare? Yep, there it is. I mean, okay, well, fine. I'll just hold out. What's he going to do? Just run? Oh, he's just going to run off dare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I held out? I guess I'm just dead. <laughs> oh, that's super funny. But yeah, so I mean, it, it's scary. But Ash still holding his own here, man. He needs to clear the stock, and there it is. Very nice. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens. Ash's neutral's looking a lot cleaner, but we're seeing the classic procs. This is some SoCal Chronicles procs. He's on platforms. Ooh, he has a strong. fireball. He is playing like a Shoto and Street Fighter, man. He is chucking Hadoukens. And I fully respect it because. It's scary. Oh, I love approaching, it. Approaching Borka is an uh, intimidating task. Oh, I love it. Little dash back. Make it look like you're running away and go straight into another move. Ooh, that's so cute. Big fan of those. Ooh, this is nice. Ooh, drop it nice, up but there. That's nice. Oh, this Hello. is a nice game. This is definitely a nice game. But there we see Prox just kind of chilling on plat. I respect it. Yeah, Ash catching the platform uh, there with the up tilt, and yeah, he he knows uh, he knows Prox Ooh. is going to these pots now. Okay. So Ash is calling him out on him very well. Super good. You need to. Uh, I think one of the biggest things you need to learn to do is either, honestly, ideally do both, but parry his fireballs or punish him retreating the plots. Mm -hmm. And if you can do both, ooh, man, you're looking good. Bubble held, gonna trade with the fireball, and oh my god, almost dies for it. Oh god. <laughs> good air dodge uh, out of the bubble butt. As feel like you got Ash punched is, in the lungs with that one. That was scary. Yeah, Ash is going bubble hell and just a barely misconfirmed from both oh of them. God. Back and forth. There's the game. Ooh, Ash is going to take game one. Very nice game. Wowzers. Okay, if that's, if that's indicative of this set, this is going to be a good set. Oh, goodness. Wow, wow, wow. I, okay, I hate so it. going to game this. two, Why Ash, do you do that? <laughs> didn't steal that one, but definitely made a big comeback. He played it really well. Um, early on, I think Prox got away with jumping to platforms and just retreating, but Ash tried to really call that out hard near the end, so I'm excited to see the rest of the set. Yeah, so Prox opting to go to another long stage, but uh, a little bit better platform layout for him in Rockwall. Uh, also going to be less easy to uh, edgeguard the Zetter Burn because you're just going to die. Um, I do like this counter pick quite a bit against Orcane. We're going to see how it works out for him as we go into game two. Rockwall. Oh, man. What a beautiful stage. <laughs> I love this stage. It's I know. a great stage. Ash would often leave this one unbanned for me too, and it's one of my personal favorites. It's it's just such a fun stage, man. Uh, oh, well, there was no tech on the shine, but doesn't die for it. It was close though. Yeah. Oh, good oh. parry on the bubbles, waiting out the uh, this aerial wow, stall that, uh, throughout. That parry on the bubbles just reminded me of something I heard from Yesdef. I still remember to this day Yesdef complaining about Prox uh, parrying every single bubble that he. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like once he gets into the correct mood, those bubbles become very scary. I like that Nair bounce on with the info. That was, that was cute. Um, why is Brock so good at Shine Up Strong? <laughs> Trick question. It's an auto combo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, no. so you do have to dash into it. It is a no, true combo, but you do have to dash aside, into it. So it makes the inputs, it, it's tricky. Yeah, it makes it the inputs is, harder than it seems. Because, yeah, everyone can shine up strong in place. It's not hard. But the way you actually get it is by dashing into mm -hmm. it. So you have to reset your stick to neutral before the shine. And you have to know where you are, too. Like, yep. if you're too close, you have to do a dash back first. Exactly. Um, it, c it can actually be kind of tricky to get. And Prox is just super good. I don't even think he realizes he does it. I think, like, when he's walking into a mall, sometimes he shine up, smashes the door, and it's just, Dude, he doesn't know. Last time I played Prox, I think it was in Grands, he parry baited me and then just shined up strong me in neutral. I was like, what? <laughs> like, he just, like, stopped at the corner. He was in the corner. I parried, and then he just ran Shine Up Strong, and I died. I was like, okay, I buddy. I think at this point, Shine Up Strong is just his up strong button. It really is. <laughs> he doesn't realize, he's like, hey, can you do an up smash for me? 
throws maple seed, runs up upstraw. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh god! Yeah, this, this game is looking though. really good for Crocs, by the way. Um, really good DI from uh from Ash to escape that. So I actually thought Prox was gonna go at Ash there, so that up smash by Ash, while it was kind of a hard read, was a very respectable one. Um, oh yeah, no, I, I could totally out of see. It. That and Prox is gonna answer right back, but I mean, yeah, kudos. Um, Prox doing a lot of work in that game too. Now we have Ash's counterfeit. This. Now you can't see the screen. <laughs> Gotta stop doing this to me. <laughs> Every what? time we go back, I oh, <laughs> damn center. <laughs> Oh, okay, fine. I can I can fix it for you. I can fix it for you. Oh, hold on, no. hold on. I can fix it for you. I'm afraid, chat. <laughs> it didn't make it. It's not really considerably worse, but it definitely didn't make it better. He's also looking at you. <laughs> he's kind of looking a little both ways. Zetterburn's looking ways. straight into my soul, though. <laughs> so Ash is going to get his patented counterpick in Jules Vale. Mm, okay. So we're going game three. Jules Vale? We're not going uh, Tropola. Uh, he tends to go Jules Vale first these days. Mm, okay. And honestly, I don't know if Tropola was banned, so whatever. And to be fair, Jules Vale is a very good pick for Orkane. I believe, as said earlier, it's his favorite. Yep. And, and apparently uh, he banned Tropola. So. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, uh, we're going to go into it. Uh, Jules... Bale, home of Eliana. Hey, Coward. <laughs> oh, man, I oh, miss doing commentary with you, dude. It's fun, man. It's been a bit. It's definitely been a bit. All right, so off to a good start. Tons of nares. Oh, huh. my goodness. And tech chasing with double dash attack. I actually, I think dash attack is an underrated orc game. I agree. Um, I, I, I know totally Yes you is of the belief that if you dash attack, you should have just done a baby dash down tilt. But dude, sometimes dash attack just has that right amount of bullshit. And you know, it's lagless. Yep. It, it is lagless. Like, you can't undervalue a move that's low commitment. Yeah. That also moves you towards the opponent. Maybe you exactly. catch a tech chase with it or something, you know? Ooh, I love the patience. You could see Prox was waiting. He wanted Ash to jump in the air and throw out bubbles. He wanted him to do something punishable. Oh, and uh, didn't find it right there, but he did eventually find it. Oh my God! The charge on the up strong on that platform. He oh. was dead like with a half with like a half up strong. You didn't need to charge it, buddy. He, he I was love dead. that he did. It was just like a, an added layer. He's oh, like, so I'm good. gonna kill you twice with this. <laughs> I'm taking up two stop. <laughs> oh, the up strong Ooh. catching the bubble Ooh. di in. That was really interesting. This has been a good game for Ash so far. It looks crazy because this is super close. Like, super, super close. Yeah, the uh, bubbles Ooh, on this trip. stock in particular have really aided Ash because Prox has been DIing him almost entirely in. It's um, true. Yeah, because, like, the only way that Upstrong hit because Prox is over the ledge is he DI'd over the stage to get hit by that Upstrong. And Ash is uh, recognizing that and throwing out more bubbles. Like, smart. Ooh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, he no. Has no oh, oh no. no! I loved the initiative, and then he just got caught by the candle. Oh, as big as Zetterburn's hurt box is while he's up special, you gotta say it is also a big hurt. As big as his hit box, it's a big hit box as well as what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a, a big bubble around the boy. Yeah, that was a momentum killer, honestly, because now instead of having like. Such a crazy stock and potentially an edge guard to close it out and lead. Ash is now playing from behind on this. And that always hurts, but I could see him making it back, man. This is still super hyper close. What in the world happened there? I think they both traded. <laughs> yeah, that that's just uh, some Orcane and Zetter privilege. It, it really is, man. <laughs> <laughs> you and your opponent are just both in hit stuns. Well, I guess we'll just keep Clash. It, it's like uh, two sword characters clanking in Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is anyone's game? Oh my god, right as I said it. Right as I said it. Oh. <laughs> it's everyone's game until the orc game's on fire. Yep. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that was really close to spite the uh, little bit of a flub on that edge guard. Um, Ash is going to run it back, and I think... In this case, well deserved. Yeah, because this game, I think, I think it was it was stolen, dude. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Like, that it was, was a stolen, stolen because game. of Ash's decision. So, so I, I guess it was I given away. See it, back. it was given yeah. away. Yeah, 
I guess stealing isn't the right word. It was it was given with uh with full full acknowledgement of the person who owned it. Exactly. So we are gonna go back, running it back to the Jewels Veil. We'll see if Prox can secure a spot in Grand Finals or if Ash can force a game five here. This will be good. Ooh, strong start there. I think what you said may have been uh, a heavier impact, I think you realized. The momentum killing them, um, it, it's so big. It really I is. I know Prox is a, from what I've played, he's a momentum heavy player. If you can shake him and just keep him in that like, kind of shaky mindset, <laughs> you'll play a lot better versus him oh, than no. this. If Prox gets that second win, it is going to be hard to pull it back. Prox took 13% on that first stock, ending it with a shine up strong after a bubble parry. Mm -hmm. um, that was gross. Oh no, okay. Great. I feel okay, like if he GI. didn't hit fall that, he probably could have got the dare. He may have been able to. That was okay, let's. Hey, okay. you know what? We'll take it. <laughs> Forget I if said anything, this game is. Ashes anyone. shoes, uh, we are like, hey, you know, shit happens. Sometimes the Zetterburn kills you at zero, sometimes they die at zero. <laughs> yeah, they did make a pact with the devil to play this character, so... It's true. Occasionally they have to pay off. You know what they say, it's uh, it's all human error. It, it's all human error, baby! <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, okay I the like that bubble trap better that this stock. so, so smart. Prox ended first stock with a parry on bubbles. Oh no. Oh my god. Jeez. So... He, he sat there just waiting for bubbles, and instead he got hit with another droplet, and then just like his eyes went red, and he just ran up with it. An <laughs> and like that seemed like a run up up smash, but it, honestly, it was a run up anti air. It's true. No, it's true. It called out the jump. Yep. It didn't matter what Ash threw out as the move. That was an anti air um, that Prox is going for, and Zetterburn has one of the most devastating anti air punishes in the game. If he reads the your jump with an up smash, you are gonna die. And it's a pretty quick move, man. Uh, it is only out for a frame, but no, it's it frame one. Pretty... <laughs> you, you got you got it wrong. It's frame. My one. bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is a very devastating anti. -air. Oh yeah, and it's a very large hitbox too. Mm -hmm. oh, God, this is so scary, dude. This really is anyone's game. But this edge guard didn't get parried. Can I say the new parry for Zetterbar, although it looks cool, is like... Yeah, it didn't get parried even though it definitely looked like it got parried. Just saying. Very nice. Going to game five, man. This is a sweaty set. Absolutely sweaty set. So Prox definitely stole the momentum from the last game, brought it into the this game, and then gave it away. Just gave Honestly, it away. we're in the business of giving gifts, apparently. So <laughs> we'll see what, uh, what gift gets blessed to us for this game five. And this game five is going to be a counter pick for the Zetterburn, who's going to Ethereal Gates. So remember mm. how we talked about how up smash and up tilt do not connect through this platform? And how Orcanes tend to like these stages that like let you have these long platforms to run on? Super interesting, okay. Well, Prox is gonna go there. So we'll see how this goes for him. <laughs> Ash said he may have been expecting a shorten for that parry, and I could see it, man. Uh, it's mm. always tricky to tell exactly where the Orcane's gonna go. <clears throat> oh yeah, absolutely. I'm not blaming uh, Prox for <laughs> missing the parry. I'm just saying it looked like he got the parry because the animation the is definitely so too big. big. It is way too large. Don't let Dan or Trevor know I said it, but I think the animation is way too big. Zetaburn's hair is getting a little out of control, man. That parry is He's insane. got that COVID <laughs> hair parry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Got that him. Was a, that was a personal attack, man. <laughs> my hair's getting way too long. That, that's a hey. My my COVID hair is pretty long too. That's just a that's situational comedy, brother. It's just it's the fact of the matter, man. Yeah. Oh Hopefully, no. Uh, oh goodness. Variable vacancy. That hey, is vacancy. Zora on the mic. Ooh, scary again. I did not want to see another stock lost from an up air missing on that update. It's terrifying. Oh my goodness. Prox is cleaning up right now. This is gross. Oh, and he parried the jab, but that was a really good jab ah. check by Ash. But yeah, Prox brought the momentum back into this game. Somehow found it again. It. He's not bad on this stage. He's really, really good oh. on this stage. And gross. The missed but, tech. Um, yeah, that's a stage I like taking Zetterbirds to, but 
Proc showing that just because you like a sage or so the sage isn't that like innately isn't advantageous to the character doesn't mean the player might not just decimate on that stage. Exactly. All right, so that was winners finals. Uh, Prox wins three two. Is going to oh. be moving on to grands, and I know you are hopping out of commentary. If you could do I me am. a favor and throw Ash in here for me, since you have added privileges, I that will would be indeed. fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure commentating today, and I will definitely be on for the rest of the weeklies that I can. But I have to do a quick work out of nowhere thing. Let me know if you want to come back on commentary too, because Ash will be back uh, on stream in Losers Finals. So I'm going to need a commentator since we do the no commentating your own set thing. So absolutely, uh, I will let you know. If Maybe ping to, someone for me uh, to see if we can <clears throat> find commentators. I know sure. Kevin likes doing it, and I know uh, Tomas. I'll try to check it. around and see if I can find some boys. Yeah, because yeah, we're definitely going to need it for at least one set. Absolutely. All right. Have fun, guys. Thank you. All right. I'm going to be joined by Ash here um, for our... Sup? Hey, how's it going, buddy? Uh, um, going set. That was very close. Um, yeah, so there's a... Go there was a funny interaction at game five that's a little known fact. Um, if you notice, I nair bounced right on top of his flame pool, and I didn't get lit on fire. Yeah. The reason for that is um, um, when you... Um, Nair bounce now, the way that they made it so that it doesn't refresh resources anymore is it doesn't consider you touching the ground. So which because of that, if... Yeah, which is fine. And then the way that... And because of that, if you Nair bounce on top of something like um, better uh, flame pools, you don't get hit by it. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting. You know, and honestly, I kind of like that it doesn't get burned. Yeah, same. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go on to loser semis. Um, I know Dinos generally streams a little bit more than this, but uh, like I said, I am gonna be treating this like it's a local. So as far as I'm concerned, the venue's closed. Um, yeah. <laughs> we are streaming loser semis to grands. Uh, so our loser semis match is going to be Fragalicious uh, on the Maple versus Brave on the Crag. Um, Ash, do you want to go ahead and just like DM me? Um, your Twitter handle, so I can just copy paste it in here. Oh, I got you. Uh, oh, I'll do it. I follow you, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm planning on changing it soon, because I made it when I was in oh, seventh right. grade. Oh, right. It's like the skater nerd, right? Precisely. Um, all lowercase here. Yeah? Yep. Cool. Precisely as I put it. And then, do you do you stream? Um, I haven't streamed in like eight million years. Okay, so, so I'm gonna say no. I, I plan on coming back, but I, I'll have many ways to get my name out by then. Fair enough. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get ready. Um, I didn't get to give you the little rundown of how I'm running this, but the screen that you're seeing right now is the same that uh, stream is. When you see this, that means I am updating the scores and or updating the players. When you see this next screen, that means I am ready to start the next match. Um, so that means we're good to do, uh, transitions. And then, uh, Neat. I will handle all of it from there, so. We are Sick. ready. Kind of. Love this layout. We're not ready. <laughs> That's okay, we got time. So Brave, uh, beating Night Slash tournament. Um, we didn't get to see it because of time issues, but before this set, Brave took a win on Night Slash, which is a pretty good win for him. Yeah, that's, that's um, actually a huge upset, honestly. Yeah, um, this isn't to take away from Brave, but it is important to mention that Night Slash's internet was really rough today. Yeah, I but mean, like, that's the online life, right? Yeah, yeah, and like, that's not to take away from him, because I think Brave can do it regardless of the connection, so... Regardless, that's I think Brave can absolutely do this on local, on anything, so... Definitely not trying to discount Brave Yeah, with no, that. you're good. Uh, but we are going to go into Loser Semis right now, and it's going to be on Merchant Port, so let's get going. These guys are already Arizona enough to start here, and exactly. I love it. Exactly, yeah, this is uh, it's the classic, man. So Frag took a win on Chompers' Eliana today, so we got that for sure. Yeah, it was a solid 2-0. Game 1 was uh, pretty decisive, and Game 2 was closer, but uh, had the ability to grind it out and find the win. Yep. Meanwhile, Brave, as you said, making the run by losing the props, but then taking out Chompers as well. 
um, 2-0. Um, yep. Beating Night Slash, and now we are here in loser semis against Fragalicious. Yeah. And these two's set history is pretty wild. Um, lifetime, I'm pretty sure they're like somewhere close to even. Maybe slight frag? I'm not exactly sure. I know when they first started, it was brave every time. Oh, the ledge cancel on the up special, and then the crouch cancel on the pillar! That was so good! That's actually amazing. I That's one thing I was telling him and Tech, actually. Oh, that's very tragic. Yeah, unfortunate on the recovery there. But yeah, that was... Yeah. Oh, there's another uh, ledge cancel. Very good. And then Brave using a roll into Lily to just get out of the situation. Doesn't mind getting bit there. Yeah, plus he's like 140 as Crag. He's yeah, probably, no, you know... Very smart. Um... Finds a, his... finds a stock anyway, um, eventually, but yeah, as I was saying, this was traditionally 100% brave, but recently, Fragalicious has been on a tear when it comes to improvement. Um, like, yeah. I, would, I would say that up until Fragalicious started his climb, Night Slash was without a doubt the most improved in the scene. And now I'm saying, like, most improved is probably Frag right now. Because yeah, Night definitely. Slash is good now, but, like not improving at the rate because obviously like your rate of improvement slows down over time right but i think frag delicious yeah. is that person right now with the most gains i've seen in such a short amount of time one thing about frag that i think is the mentality of somebody who's gonna improve well is the better player he's playing against when he's trying to get practice games the happier he is yeah, he like, takes losses very well, and he, like that. Then that's the key, right? You need to understand that you're gonna lose the game. Yeah. Well, he also told me when he like, for example, if he pings like matchmaking or something, he says, "I'd rather get my ass beat for an hour straight than just win convincingly every game," because he feels like he w he learns a lot less from those. And that's a great which, mindset. Yeah, fantastic mindset. That right, said, so, back to the game though. We're at. Very close game. Oh my goodness. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, yeah, a close uh, close game until an up. Yeah, that was a DIN on dash attack that led to that up strong, too. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, DIN on dash attack, you see like an up air or maybe an up special, but Frag was just like, you know what? Let's let it rip, baby. Yeah, one interesting thing I can say about Brave is I've noticed the way he plays heavily depends on how confident he is against the player. I've noticed that. And um, when he plays against somebody like Frag, someone he absolutely knows he can beat, they go like even or they go, they go close, he tends to make pretty bold decisions. And one thing he sometimes does is he'll like DI in on a move, maybe expecting them not to follow up correctly and try to counter hit. And I kind of saw that there, the D.I.N. It looked like he was about ready to try to forward air him out of his comp. Mm, okay. Or maybe even get like a Nair because it's frame five and starts below him. Um, yeah. yeah. Kind of catch that like over aggression, the over extension. Yeah. I also recognize this because when the first time I played him, he tried to do that against me a lot. And I didn't let him get away with it once. And then he stopped entirely. Yeah. So a sign of a good player adapting to the situation. Um, yep. We are going to move to game two, which is going to be on Fire Capital. Um, actually, Neo Fire Capital. Sorry. I love it. This is my favorite uh, visual stage and my favorite song. In Fun fact. It's a it's a great song. I wish it was a better Claren stage, but uh, yeah. I, do <laughs> like it. I do like it. It's a great stage. I just wish it was something I played more often as my main. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is one of Clarence's first days. I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, but. I, I personally agree, but uh, neither here nor there. We are here with Maple and Crag, and I do think this is a really good counter pick for the Crag. Getting to um, not get pushed off stage as easily against Maple, which is how really Maple wins the matchup, is by getting this edge, like quick edge guard. Yeah. And I think I think both of these characters really like the stage, but I think Crag benefits so much than Maple does. I agree. So it, I think overall it's a great that said, ooh, Went I wonder the if he up special. Yeah, that was a dash attack into up strong, but uh, Brave was too high percent for it to connect that time. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is Frag likes to up strong pretty much any time any time they're above him. I think he wants to try to lab out some up special stuff. 
I, I don't think it e even is that he doesn't have it. I just think sometimes he doesn't quite have the awareness to see when the up special is better yet. Mm -hmm. But he's also been grinding out so many other things that Maples is early or is like, you know, at the point that he's at, have Ooh, no idea. Hot. That was hot. That was, that was sick. <laughs> that was really, really good too, because he covered every other DI frag could have done. Because if he DI'd in, he would have gotten up. Ooh, okay. No follow up there. But Fraglicious is doing just such a good job of covering landings in particular, too. Like, once Brave gets above him, he's not getting down easily. Like, he's eating yeah. at least, like, 30 extra percent. And honestly, that, I think, is one of the most critical things to learn in the Krag matchup. I think it's really tough for him to come down when your opponent knows what about Krag's coming down is, like, you need to avoid and what is, like, something you can explore. And yeah, absolutely. And, Frag uh, doing that just never let him. Yeah, he d didn't give him a chance to really just like feel comfortable in the matchup. Yeah. Uh, but there is one more game, and I kind of like the counter pick. So like, I wouldn't like this unless I saw what I just did. Um, we're going yeah. to Treetop Lodge, so we're going from huge to small. And considering the huge didn't work out like at all. I like the massive change in scenery. Yeah, I like, agree. You get to see if this works better for you. You get to see like what the problem was, right? And yeah. Like, yeah, I really like this counter pick, despite it not being a good choice personally um, early on. But based on the last game, I like it a lot. I like that he's experiment. For yeah, sure. exactly. And you know, hell, if this works out, maybe he can try some other stages similar to this. Maybe he can go to Tower of Heaven. It's kind of somewhat similar in length, a little bit shorter. And the blast zones kind of are similar. Like, he can go for that, he can go for rock wall, he could go for stuff like that. So, I like the experimentation. That down smash DI was not good, but he still managed to live. If he was anyone other than Krag, they might have died off that DI. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, we are uh, seeing a. A little bit of a back and forth here. Yes, a bit great, of a forth. great DI on the pillar. That's something I wanted to teach both uh, Frag and uh, Tech, because they were talking about how the fact that they'd get caught by that mid stage pillar a lot. And I'm like, if you ever get the chance, crouch cancel it. You get to counter hit them pretty much every time. Yeah, and we did see the crouch cancel come out in the first game on Merchant Port um, in particular. Um, we've been seeing a lot of good, just like. Honestly, classic Krag counterplay, which only comes with matchup experience. Like, I say yeah. classic, but it's not something that you get until you're really comfortable with how Rivals plays. Yeah, all oh, that's that recovery. He blundered on his recovery, and that's really gonna make him have to climb an uphill battle here. And Frag's just saying, like, cool story, bro. <laughs> like, he's just not letting him breathe. It's brutal. Oh, huh? not the best, but he's still living. Never mind. It was the best DI. Never listen to me. Oh, by the way, the crouch cancel on Uppy thing. Well, another thing that just shows how much. Oh my, that's unfortunate. But um, another thing that just shows how much Frag has improved. I only told him that like a week ago. Like I didn't. This isn't something he's like taken a long time to work on. He Im implemented that pretty quickly. Yeah, he is a very quick learner, and it shows. In fact, he impl he started getting the idea of implementing it the same day, because we played, I played Krag, I mid-stage pillared him, and he didn't let me get away with it three times in a row. So, that's the sign of a great player. But that said, we're moving on to Losers Finals, which involves me, so I'm going to head out. But... Sounds good. I think I'm going to get Dinos to join me, if I'm correct. Yep. I hope uh, so. I don't know if he, can, yeah, if he uh, responded in chat yet. Refrain is in, the in general. I don't know if he's trying to get but... Oh, um, well, I'll get someone to join me. Yeah. So but thank yeah. you for commentating. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Oh, never mind. Dinos is here. Hello? All right. I will see you all later. See you later, buddy. Uh, hey. Dinos, what is your Twitch? Is it just plastic oh. underscore Dinos like your Twitter? It is. Uh, Kevin also volunteered to commentate. I don't know if you wanted him to. I think Zach just dragged him we in. Can, we can do tri commentary or double commentary. I don't know. However you want to do it, Yeah, friend. drag him in here. Uh, he Hello. isn't here. Zach Garden did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs>
<laughs> so you would have had to say no to his, his puppy dog eyes. All right, I changed my mind. Kevin, you can stay. Noah, get out. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Eat down. Hello. Hello. Welcome to my dojo. Um, we are here to join Losers Finals, which we have Ash on Arcane versus Fragalicious on the Maple, which we have just seen a couple sets in a row here. I think three sets in a row, actually. Thank yeah, you. I see. Uh, I'm looking at the bracket. I've been largely absent tonight. So this is really the first time I'm getting a good look at it. And there was some really cool matches. Um, frag beating Pokey. Uh, a Frag Brave loser semis is really cool. Uh, brave brave beating Night Slash 3-1. Oh, Frag did beat Pokey. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, br uh, I think upsets. the biggest stories of today were, um, I guess you can kind of call it a story. Like, Chomper is going out. Um, oh, uh, not uh, one and two against um, Fraglicious and Brave, losing both those sets. And then the big upset of Brave over Night Slash. I think yeah, that the is the biggest big stories one. of today. Yeah, that's um, that's that's definitely the one I, I wish I saw now. I'm probably going to go back well, and see that, actually. <laughs> no, um, <Brave laughs> don't Night see Slash that. did not get streamed, actually. It didn't? What the? Dude, Unfortunately. It is 10 I know. <laughs> it's still your fault. Yeah. See, Kevin gets it. Yeah. So we've got Losers Finals Ash vs. Frag, then? Uh, yeah. Oh, I know why it's not refreshing. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Because you're stoopy. That's the one. Haha. <laughs> how'd the uh, how the new stream tool go? By the way, I think oh, it's going smoothly. great. It's going great. Okay. Um, Good. The stream's gonna have to hear it me explain it sarcastic. one more time. Too. Um, but basically, the way I've been running this is this is the downtime.